this is sort of like what we are about to do. Talk a bit about what is finance, something that should most likely confuse you, the difference between profit and cash flow. We get into those pesky financial statements so you understand it. Very importantly, we will speak this time a bit about internal controls so people don't rip you off. And some analysis that you could do to manage the business, some simple tools. Crucial point is that the creative and commercial needs of the brand have to be an equal footing for the company to be a success. It's a bit aged, the quote, all right, but it's still very true today. This was said by these two folks who you may not recognize, but when you see the names, you know who it is. Look at the surname. <laughs> Forget about the first name. Look at the surname. <laughs> right? These are the people behind Prada, husband and wife team. She is the creative. He was, he's the commercial, the financial person. The two have to work together. What is finance? Finance is every single thing you do in your business every single day. It's not something that only the finance people deal with. And if you think of finance that way, you understand its importance. The heart of finance is value. Creating value. Right? If you think about it, that is what Facebook and Apple did. Apple were the geniuses with it. You didn't know you needed an iPod. They created a product. They created something and convinced you you need Apple products. They created value from nothing. Finance is about creating value. And if we create value, therefore we need to learn how to measure value, to know if something is valuable, if we should invest in it, if we should buy it. All right? So if you think of it that way, then every decision you make in your business as an entrepreneur is a finance decision, right? So everything you do in your business is you are trying to create value. You're looking for profitability, viability. Every single thing you do from make who you're ordering products from, who you're advertising, everything you do is geared towards creating value. Therefore, it's a finance decision. Are we okay? All right. Since we're in business, we know this name, correct? <laughs> we know this name. If we don't, one of the richest men in the world, and he has been one of the richest men most likely before some of you all were born, and still is. Other people come and go, but he has always been there. All right? When you make this amount of money in business, it tends to mean you do a couple things right along the way. So we tend to listen to him when, we, when he speaks. In fact, people pay a lot of money to be in his presence, to listen to him. You get it for free today. So this is something he said, which should solve all your problems with I don't need to know this or I don't want to know this. You have to understand accounting, and you have to understand the nuances of accounting. It's the language of business. That's the problem. If you want to be in business, the language of business, unfortunately, is accounting. So we need to understand. You don't have to be the person doing it, but you need to be able to understand a bit of it. It's an imperfect language, and that's the problem. Most likely, unless you did some sort of accounting class, you were here last year with me, you did some accounting course, everything you believe accounting to be, by the end of this morning, you will realize you are totally wrong. The logic you believe that is in, a, in accounting is normally not what it is. All right, he goes on to say, but unless you're willing to put in the effort to learn accounting, how to read and interpret financial statements, that's why you're here, you really shouldn't select stocks yourself. 
What he means is you really shouldn't be making business decisions because you don't understand the language. And then I know the next answer. I will hire somebody to do it. And that's why I put up my email address. But I like that answer. Because when you hire somebody who dresses like this, and we could go into a long debate with ethics and this profession, because if you understand human beings and you understand the person who tends towards numbers, accounting, finance, engineers, etc. They tend towards numbers. If you tend towards human beings and people, you tend to go in other professions. Could I just, how you, in, it was ingrained in you. So, in five minutes, somebody who dresses like me will realize you don't understand these numbers at all. And then they will smile. First key is to get you to trust me. And then after that, your money will slowly become my money. <laughs> right. Okay? You, need to, uh, you don't need to be the person doing it. You don't, don't need to be in the trenches. But you need to understand a bit of it. And that's why we'll talk about internal controls, etc. that you could put in place to keep check on what is happening. All right. Accounting profit versus cash flow. Your business is about cash flow. Suppliers, employees, the world is about cash. That is the lifeblood of the business. But the accounting system generates something called accounting profit. And most people equate the two and they are not the same. All right, so there's the first thing we need to understand. To get into that, we need to start to slowly touch on accounting. All right, so this is, let's call it a model of accounting. Events happen, buying, selling, all of that. That is, goes through a filter, accounting rules, which have some flexibility so there is management, decision, and choices. People start to panic when we talk about the flexibility. But if you think about it, this model, accounting, was designed for sourcing Curab Junction. It was designed for the coconut man by the doubles place outside UE. It was designed for fashion TT to use. It was designed for BP to use. In order for it to handle that wide range and size of companies, flexibility had to be built into it. All right, so this is the filter. And based on that filter is how the transactions would be recorded and the financial statements produced. So the key then to understanding these animals what your accountants or the bank or inland revenue wants from you is to understand the filter. Because all this is just an output from the filter. All right? This is what most people believe is accounting. Source and cure junctions, coconut men, little ladies selling tolom and sweeties outside primary schools would use cash accounting. You receive cash. That is revenue. You spend cash, expenses. Profit is your bank account. That is cash accounting. It was the first form of accounting. It is simple. What we practice today, which we'll get into, is something called accrual accounting. Because cash accounting can't handle the complications of your business, right? You sell something to somebody on credit, or your suppliers give you credit. If I'm using cash accounting, there was no movement of cash, I can't record anything. 
So you got inventory, you got product, or you sold the product, and there is no record anywhere of it. All right? That is what cash accounting would do if you use credit. Accrual accounting was created to deal with these complications, but it added human judgment into accounting. And from the time you add human judgment in terms of when and how much I record revenue expenses and other things, I unfortunately open the door up to unscrupulous people. All right? So, in the form of accounting we practice, revenue is not recorded when cash is received, and we'll get into that. It is recorded when it is earned. Somebody has to determine that. Expenses are recorded when they are incurred. The expense part is easier to explain for you. We know what is happening with TT Post. Your light bill for the business didn't come in this month. You're going to prepare your books for the end of July and the light bill, the phone bill didn't come in. What do you put for light and phone expense? Zero. What, what do you do? Do you put zero? Whatever complex method you use to get a figure, you guess a figure. You estimate it. Because you know you use light on the telephone. Expenses are recorded when they're incurred, not when you pay them. So you put in an estimate. So I'm glad you said that. This world, these financial statements are full of estimates in them also. They're supposed to be reasonable, but you have estimates. All right. Before to understand what we just did, we need to run through some accounting principles. You don't need to cram this off. You just need a basic understanding. Calling them accounting principles gets you frightened. So we use the American terminology. Accounting is a model, is a system. These are the assumptions for that model to work. Traditional assumptions of the accounting model. Right? We okay? So we begin. Normally you and your, whoever doing your accounts would have the argument about the first one. In order to know how the business is operating, if this is a business or a charity, a lot of people have things that they believe are businesses but it's really a charity, I need to separate all the stuff for the business in a separate place. I can't combine your stuff as the owner with the business stuff, the business entity. So I'm sure you would have been told, like if you're incorporating or something, that you have to have your own bank, the business has to have its own bank account, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you go to the bank and you get the shock of your life of what it takes to open a bank account in Trinidad these days, All right? So that's the business entity concept. The business has to be separate from the owner. For one simple reason, I need to know if the business is performing. If I allow you to mix things, then I wouldn't know how the business is performing. Because I am going to continue forever. I am not in the business of selling tables and chairs. It may happen, so I record that table at its original value. I know some smart person will say, yes, I need to depreciate it. Yes, I need to depreciate it. So the value you see on the financials for your assets are not how much you could sell your assets for. Reason being is accounting is supposed to be, where is it? Objective. It's supposed to be objective. Meaning the auditor, a bank, third party could come and verify your financials. If I record the desk at how much I paid for it or the table, I have an invoice. Somebody could track back to my bank account and see the money leave. If I ask you what's the market value of that table, everybody will come up with a different figure. If we bring in three valuators, they'll have different figures. That is not 
objective. We understand? So, just understand the figures you, see, you are seeing on the financials are not today's value. All right? So, in a sense, if an accountant is preparing your company's financials or any company's financials, the value is understated in your accounts. If you go to the bank for a loan, they will send their valuators to figure out the market value of your assets in case they have to sell your assets because they know your financials would be understated. All right, monetary unit, very important for this industry. In accounting, we measure things in dollars and cents. Therefore, a lot of what drives your business cannot be in your accounts. So, that little Coca-Cola bottling plant on the highway you'd have passed when you were coming up, that would be in the financials of Coca-Cola International. All right? Coca-Cola's brand, KFC's brand, is not in Coca-Cola's financials. What is the value of Coca-Cola's brand? Exactly. You don't know. There is no way to objectively determine it. So, because of the monetary unit and objectivity, brand, image, goodwill, are not in a company's accounts because it cannot be objectively valued. The day you see brand image goodwill in someone's accounts is because they purchased it. The two big ones which get us to the cash accounting and accrual accounting is the realization and matching principle that deals with revenue and expenses. So, in accounting, revenue is recognized when it is earned. I sold you a product, you took the product, I, the business, have done what I am supposed to do. The fact that you promised to pay 90 days from now is irrelevant. I did what I was supposed to do, I have earned the revenue. Right? If you think about it, not hotels.com, etc., but if you deal direct with a hotel, when you check in, do they deduct all the money from your credit card? No. They wait until you're leaving. Right? But that doesn't mean that every day that you are there, or every night, they go by nights, they are not recording revenue. But they take the cash at the end. We okay? So revenue in accounting is very different from cash because of credit, credit sales, etc. Matching principle is what we met with the expenses. I record expenses when they incurred. Again, it doesn't matter if I pay the expense. It doesn't matter if the bill arrives. I know I incurred the expense. I record, ex I record the expense. All right? The reason for that, again, is for performance. To understand how the company is performing this month or this year, I have to match the expenses incurred this year with the revenue generated this year. So if bills have not arrived and I know I incurred the expenses, I still need to match them to the revenue to understand performance. All right, financial statements, which I'm sure you have heard the term before and you have seen. Businesses have two main objectives. Solvency, the ability to pay your debts, that was CL financial problem. Profitability, to be profitable, all right? 
the financial statements, and we'll come back to this slide, which are enshrined in the accounting rules. It's the first accounting rule states that a complete set of financial statements and they tell you the statements that need to be prepared. It requires the statements to be presented at least annually, so you need to prepare it at least once a year. First and second accounting rule. Right? So, the financial statements serve this purpose. The problem is most people only look at one, and there are four, but three main ones, but most people only look at one. You know what is an income statement, correct? Profit and loss account, correct? The name you know tends to tell your age. P&L, profit and loss account. Then they change the name to income statement. And now the name is Statement of Comprehensive Income. Whichever name you know is the same animal. You look at that. You know that. That only tells you about profitability. If you want to know if you could pay your bills, that is what you would know as the balance sheet, now called the Statement of Financial Position, and your cash flow statement which the name alone tells you what that is about. All right? The balance sheet or statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income, or P&L as you know it, are created using this madness called accrual accounting, where cash and profit is not the same. If you want to understand your cash position, that is the purpose of the cash flow statement. So you have it all in the financials. You have the statement that tells you about profit, income statement, statement of comprehensive income, and you have the statement that will literally tell you about cash, what happened to your cash, where the cash came from, what you spent cash on, and then the balance sheet statement of financial position brings it together and you get to see, with some tools we'll look at, will I be able to cover my debts? So those are the three. So what we do in accounting is all your day-to-day -day activities, buying, selling, paying, etc., and we'll get to how that is recorded, is summarized, put through the filter of the rules, and you produce the financial statements. I could look at a sport, last night I was looking at baseball and ESPN, I could look at a sport any part of the world and understand it, because they have rules. It took me a while, but I finally understood baseball. If you understand the rules, you could look at any sport in any part of the world. Same thing with accounting. If you understand the rules, you could look at the financial statements from China, from Australia. So, income statement. We are accustomed to it. Revenue minus expenses. And we normally put the expenses in different categories just for information's sake. Because just having revenue minus a whole heap of expenses and income not giving you much information. So I normally break it out into cost of sales, distribution, administrative. We are accustomed to this, correct? All right? And that gives you income and there's what you somewhere along there you see something with taxes and there's what you submit right they give you a form you put in the information all right income statement profit for the year it's now called comprehensive income just for your information because there were certain things that were hidden on the balance sheet because we know you don't look at the balance sheet. We know you look here. So these things at the bottom, what they call under comprehensive income, used to be on the balance sheet. It was a nice place to hide things. When they changed the rules, they said bring it to the income statement where people look. Now what these things are, 
you have some US dollars. The amount of TT that is worth today is a little more than it was worth last year, correct? You have made a gain, a translation gain, an exchange difference gain. The exchange rate worsened. You made, a, you have now, your US dollars is worth more TT dollars. That is in equivalent a gain that your business has made that would go underneath here in the comprehensive income part. Because you have earned something. We understand? All right. Balance sheet, the one you never look at. Very simple. Assets. Assets are things you own. You have your personal assets. The business has its assets. Even if you're a sole trader and you're not legally separate from the business, for accounting, you are separate, the business entity. You have your assets. The business has its assets. Liabilities. People you owe. Your suppliers, etc. Inland revenue, etc. And equity is your, this is from the business. Let me rephrase this. Assets, things the business owns. Liabilities, people the business owes, third parties. Equity, the funds the business owes to the owner. You handed the business some money so the business could have life and begin to operate. That's your investment in the business, capital. The business exists for your pleasure. So when the business makes profits, it's yours. If the business owes this to you, retained earnings. When the business makes losses, it's yours also. Goes to retained earnings. So this is what the business owes you. So if you dip in the till and pull out money to go some breakfast party, it has to be recorded. Either the business loaned you the money, and therefore you become a receivable to the business, or the business says, fine, I owed you $4,000, you take out $1,000 to go to your breakfast party, I only owe you $3,000 now. I reduce this. One way or the other, it has to be recorded. Your relationship with the business. All right? Assets are always equal to liabilities plus equity. Think of it right now. Everything you have on right now, everything you have on was either paid for with your money or someone else's money, more combination of a boat. A boat. Everything you own, your car, was paid for a little bit of you, a little bit of the bank. Your house, a little bit of you, a little bit of the bank. It's two sides of the same coin. Your assets tells you what you own. Liabilities and equity tells you how it was financed. We understand? It's a sheet that balances. So it was called a balance sheet. A is equal to L plus E. That's it. Cash flow statement is what we need. Three sections. Cash flow from operations, cash flows from investing with your assets, cash flows from financing. The positive means cash coming in, the negative means cash going out. It's very simple. So I could look at this and see that I generated accounting, said I made about 13,000 in profit. But in terms of cash, the business really made 24,000 in cash. But the business spent 100,000. The only way that could happen is money had to come in from financing. And what the business did 
is I took loans, credit line and a long-term loan, in order to meet this. I took more loans. The loans I took plus the cash I generated was greater than the cash I spent, so I had some cash at the end. That's it. If I wasn't doing this, I wouldn't need to take loans. My business would generate 24,000, depending on what my expense level is, that, that may be fine. Or it may not be enough cash the business is generating. So, income statement, balance sheet, accrual, accounting, magic. Cash flow statement tells me cash, right? And a little later on, this is what most likely when you go to the bank, they want to see. But this is historic. This is what happened last year, last month. What the bank wants to see and what you want to do, and the truth is you do this right now, either on a piece of paper in your mind. Right? If you're doing the normal thing of you want to be an entrepreneur, but you're a little scoured, so you actually have a, a real job, and you're doing this part-time, I'm assuming we have folks like that, all right? Your cash inflow is your salary, and in your mind, if you have been paid already, you are projecting out for the next 30 days till you get paid again, what you're going to do with that money. You make it a big deal when the bank asks you for a cash forecast, but this is what you do every day. You know how much money you're coming in, and you have your expenses in mind. And every now and again, you check in on it, because you don't want to be running on fumes with days to go before the next inflow of cash. We okay? In case something goes wrong, you most likely have some opportunity for financing in your personal life. You have a credit card. Right? So if you have a credit card, then your, your issue is not PD. Your issue is the 10th and 11th of the month. Let's see if somebody understands what I mean. Your issue is when you need to pay the credit card. All right. Same with the business. The bank would want to see what is happening with your cash previously. That is accounting. But they would also want to see your cash projections, which we'll get into, right? To see if you are going to have cash. And the cash projections are important for you. <coughs> it's good to know when you will have surpluses. We'll look at it, I guess, after the break. Or when you will have deficits, because you could plan for that in advance. You don't want the shock of realizing one month you run out of money when you could have planned for it and anticipate, look, December look a little iffy. So maybe I need to deal with some financing now. You go into the bank now to talk about financing in December is a different conversation than you running through the doors on the, during December. All right, so we are going to do some accounting just to show you that what the person who does accounting for you or if you want to do it yourself, this is not rocket science. <clears throat> Model was created in 15th century by a monk. Did they have tablets in the 15th century? Did they have iPhones, smartphones, cars? They didn't have these things in the 15th century, correct? Did they have indoor plumbing? No. So these barbarians could understand this. You with indoor plumbing could understand this. It's that simple. If they could understand this, you could understand this. All right. It's maths. He was a mathematician. From the very beginning, 
It was created to figure out how is the business doing. Before Luca's creation, to understand business performance, you would have to shut down the business and count up everything. Count up all your assets, check all who, who you owe money, count everything, and then you would know, okay, the business suffering, we're doing well, etc. Luca found that to be very inefficient. And because he had a, was a monk in the 15th century with no electricity, nothing to do in the night, he decided to solve the problem. He didn't have cable. Right? So, he came up with the idea that if you develop a system of records and you build integrity into the records so that you trust the records, then I don't need to count. What do you, need, what do, you do when you want to know your bank balance? What do you do? You go online. You call the bank, you go into the bank over the counter, you go on some app on a phone, and you believe it. You don't actually see your cash, correct? That is Luca's system. A system of records that has integrity. All right. He was a mathematician, so he understood you needed data. The data for this system is called a transaction, but not Everything is a transaction in accounting. It must be measurable and it must have evidence. So, if during the week you pick up the phone and you order food, if you create an order, a purchase order in your business, you pick up the phone and you order some fabric, that is not an accounting transaction. Think of it. You ordered food or you ordered fabric. What happened? Anything happened? Nope. Nothing actually happened. You're still hungry. Legally, something happened. There's some sort of contract, a PO, that is legally. But for accounting and finance, nothing happened. When the product is delivered and you accept it, no, something has happened. You have gotten inventory and you owe someone money. Evidence, measurable. So not everything that happens is recorded, is not an accounting transaction. Accounting equation, we just met it. A is equal to L plus E. Luca built this model on that equation, because he was a mathematician. If you think of it, well, we did this already. If you think of it, in order for A equal L plus E to stay in balance, every transaction must affect both sides. Think of the equation. If something only affects one side, it will go out of balance. For A to equal L plus E to stay like that, each activity has to have two sides to it. And that is where the word double entry accounting system came about. Take off the top of the cross and you have a T. So Luca created a vessel, a T account, where on one side you put increases on the other side, you put decreases, and the difference is the balance, right? So we're going to do exactly what you just did, but we need a rule to operate the T account. There's your T account. For no good reason, no, no, absolutely no reason, he called this side the debit side and that side the credit side. That is the problem with people with debit and credit. They feel it have a logic to it, and they want to reason it out. No, he wake up the morning and said, this is, this is debit, this is her credit. All right? But he created some rules, and the rules are what's important. Where are my baby? Well, come on. Right. So for assets, he said, remember, you just did increase, decrease, increase, decrease. He said for assets, 
I will write increases on this side. For liability, now it's an equation. When I take stuff across the equation, what happens to the signs? They change. So for stuff on this side, increases are on the right side and decreases on the left side. For stuff on this side, increases are on the left side, decreases are on the right side. So you're going to do the same thing you did with increase, decrease, but now we're putting it on different sides of these T accounts. Let me explain it. When you put money in the bank, the bank records that it owes you the money. You are a liability to the bank. So the bank credits your bank account because it is not your bank account. It is the bank's record that it owes you money. You want to use the bank's records for your personal records. When the bank sends your bank statement, which we'll get into, that is their records. You are supposed to have your records and compare it because they make mistakes. So that is why they credit your bank account. It's not your bank account. It's their account. And you are a liability to them. Another thing that causes the confusion with debit and credit is the English language. You put emotion to these words. You're a credit to the organization. There's a debit. You put good and bad to this concept of debit and credit. For accounting, debit means left. Accounting means right side. Left side and right side. That is it. It's like starboard and port on a ship. There's no emotion to it. So, basically, what happens... Transactions are recorded in these little T accounts. This is you, debit, cash, credit, equity. You take the loan, debit, cash, credit, loan payable. And at the end, the accounts are balanced. So my cash account has 150 in it, assets 150. My liability is 50, and equity is 100. The equation is in balance. And these balances go to the financial statements. If you're using a notebook, you are physically moving the balances. If you create something in Excel or you're using a, an accounting software, the system moves the balances and, it, and that's how you prepare the financial statements. So, the financial statements, so this is the figure that would be on the balance sheet for cash on the assets. This is the figure that would be on the balance sheet on the liabilities for loans. This is the figure that would be on the balance sheet on the equity. The financial statements are just a summary of the data it captured in the accounts. We okay? The accounting system, just to explain it, because you would hear these terms if you're talking to somebody doing your accounts. Journals, you might hear the person say they're making a journal entry. That is the debit and credit. All right? That is just the debit and credit. So you invested 100000 in the business, debit, cash, credit, equity. That is what they will call a journal entry. The journal entries, as we saw, are fed into these accounts, right? Either you have that or you're using a computer system and your accounts are actually the database. The ledger, this is the place where all the accounts are kept. Every Christmas morning, you have nothing to do. You sit down, you watch Scrooge, and Scrooge has the big red notebook. A lot of government ministries still have the big gigantic red notebook. And in that book is where every page is an account. The book is called the ledger. Nowadays, your ledger is a database, is a computer system. Right? The accounts, just so you know, if you're using the computer system, they build intelligence into the accounts. The accounts is a number. You would know it as your Republic Bank account. 
in your accounting system, that might be account 10001. And people who do accounts know how to shut you up. Because you will come and start to ask us questions, and I will say, oh, you mean account 1000167, you just get fed up and you leave. Right? All your accounts are represented by numbers, and they would bill intelligence into those numbers. Meaning, the first digit means something. The second digit means something. All right? And on top of your computer system, the database is a report writer. And you press a button, and the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow is prepared. Because it's reading the data. Take the balance in the cash account and put it here on the balance sheet. Take the balance in your sales account and put it here on your income statement. Because all the financials are just a summary of that data. We understand? It's generated by the rules. Your, your system is either manual or computerized. You have heard the word bookkeeping. The bookkeeping aspect of accounting is what the computer does. So if you're using a computer system, you may not really be doing debit and credit. You go into the accounts payable module and you enter an invoice to be paid. The system understands, look, you went into accounts payable. This is something to be paid. So when you enter the item, they know, OK, this is an expense. And it's to be paid. It does, the system does the debit and credit. You print a check if you're using a computer system. The system knows, OK, I am paying a liability. Clear the liability. The check will reduce my cash balance. So if you're using a computer system, you may not actually be doing debit and credit. You are paying people, receiving cash in the cash register. And the system behind the scenes is doing these debits and credits. If you're doing it manually, then you're doing the debits and credits, because you're writing out a check manually, rip it out of the checkbook, give somebody, and then you or somebody has to record you wrote out this check and it, how it affects your cash, et cetera. Because you don't want to be writing too many checks. You don't want to be writing checks and you don't have enough cash. All right, this is what your accountant or an accounting person does every day, every month, every year, which is why most people would say it's a very boring profession. <laughs> so transactions are analyzed. Either you or the computer system does the debit and credit. That is the journal. It is entered into your computer system, posted into the system. Sometimes you need to make adjusting entries. Adjusting entries is like, your depreciation and things like that. Closing entries at the end of a month, at the end of a year, certain accounts are closed, certain accounts roll forward. And believe it or not, you know this, you just don't know you know this. If your balance at December the 31st is 20,000 in your bank account, when you go to sleep and get up January 1st, what's the balance in your cash account? 20,000. The accounts on the balance sheet, asset liabilities, equity, at the end of every month, at the end of every year, they just roll forward. Sales for last month was 30,000. It's day one of the new month. How much is sales? Zero. The accounts on the income statement at the end of every period are brought down to zero, and they start over. You know this. You just didn't know the accounting system was doing it. And once you close off the accounts, and you get the balances, it feeds into the financial statements. So looking at this whole system, you realize, just as we said at the beginning, if we understand the rules, Basically, that is what controls everything. And now you understand, when you see Republic Bank or Ansa Macal or whoever say they made two billion in profit, that does not mean they have two billion in cash. You want to know how much cash they have, you go to the balance sheet and you look at cash. 
So this company has $230 or $230,000 in cash. Profit is that, 161000 But they only have that in cash. And that's the big difference. A lot of people like to focus on this number. This number is magic. That is what it is, it's magic. You can't do nothing with this number. This is the number that you pay salaries and you pay yourself, and this is the number that you use to pay your suppliers, etc. All right, management of the financial statements. Just some what you could use them for, because they have a purpose, right? We didn't, I didn't go through the whole boring definition of accounting, but accounting is supposed to provide information. That is the purpose. So the financial statements communicate something to you. It's just to understand how to read them. All right, so we'll start off with some using some basic percentages. Three years of income statements. You cannot help yourself. Natural greed takes over, so you focus on the top line sales, and then immediately your eyes will drop to the bottom to look at income. Nobody ever looks in the middle. You can't help yourself. Right? The most you would see is look like revenue increasing, but profit decreasing, and that's about it. All right? If I just add some basic percentages, now this is a technique. English accounting, people who came follow the English system, who were colonies of England, would call this vertical analysis. I make sales 100% on every line of percentage of sales. The Americans call this common sizing the income statement, meaning I am making everybody common. I could compare big companies with small companies. If I do this, you could calmly see that the cost of goods sold, some people have a problem with this term, 15th century, cost of goods sold. You bought something for $5 and they sold it for 10, cost of goods sold is $5, right? The cost of the goods being sold have been increasing as a percentage of sales, so this is getting more expensive. When I come down here, people are always the problem. My was it, selling expenses are increasing, general expenses, you see in the increases, right? So I could I would be able to understand why for every dollar of sales. I was making eight cents here, and why every dollar of sales, I am now making three cents. Because this is increasing, all my expenses have been going up. All right? Just adding basic percentages. Another way to do it, this is vertical, is what is called horizontal. I make one year the base year. That year, Every line is 100%. And then I work out the percentage increases. So I could easily see that over the three years, sales went up by close to about 10%. But at the same time, cost of goods sold went up by 15%. Selling expenses went up by 40%, this by 15%. I, under I could understand why my profitability has dropped. Basic percentages, nothing complicated, <laughs> right? Because looking at the absolute numbers, you're not going to see anything looking at that. All you will see is sales increasing this fall in your car. But once I add some percentages, a lot more information is coming. Like I'm sure you didn't realize that from here to here, this was like 15% increase. <laughs> 
from here to there, that is 40% selling expenses went up by. Once you have the percentages, the increases and decreases are much easier to understand. Basic percentages, we okay? All right, liquidity, your ability to pay your short-term debt, which is extremely important. Mr. Buffett again, one of the things you will find which is interesting and people don't think of it enough, with most businesses and with most individuals, life tends to snap you at your weakest link. The two biggest, weakest links in my experience, I've seen more people fail because of liquor and leverage. Leverage being borrowed money, CL Financial. All right? Your ability to pay your debts when they're due will determine if you are here next year. So that is liquidity. Normally, you had to explain the importance of liquidity to people because you're so focused on profitability. But thanks to what happened over the last couple of years, you don't need to explain the importance of liquidity to people. CL Financial, Bears and Stern, I know these names since I was born. Not with us anymore. If you can't pay your debts, you're not going to be around. And if you need to dip into your car and sell your spare tire or your jack, or you need to open the wardrobe and sell some of the pumps, that is not liquidity. Liquidity refers to an entity's ability to pay its debts without disrupting productive capabilities. If you have to sell assets to pay your monthly debts, that is not liquidity. You're supposed to generate enough cash monthly to deal with your monthly debts. Balanced asset financing or unbalanced asset financing is what causes a problem with liquidity, right? Current assets are assets that you reasonably expect to be converted to cash within a year. So when you look at the balance sheet, you'll see things like cash, receivables, inventory. That is what we call current assets. You expect them to be converted to cash within a year. Current liabilities are your debts that will be due within a year. Non-current assets, land, equipment, furniture, you don't expect to be converted to cash within a year. Long-term liabilities long-term loans, etc., cetera, you don't have to pay it off in a year, and we met equity or capital, your relationship with the business. We okay? If you're working capital, it's called working capital because this is what's really working in the business. All right? If your working capital is positive, it means your current assets are bigger than your current liabilities, when the current assets are converted to cash, you should have enough money to pay your current liabilities. Now, you notice how easy you came up with that. Believe it or not, that is what is called an accounting ratio. We, are, we have now entered the realm of financial statement analysis. And that is your first ratio of liquidity. That is called the current ratio. By creating a fraction, no, I could compare big companies with small companies because it doesn't matter how big the numbers are. Solvency is the ability for us to pay our long-term debts. Cash and internal control for cash, which I believe is very important for you. So even if you don't know much about accounting, so you hire accountants, you have employees, etc., or one person, you need some sort of control system, all right? Because we don't trust human beings. So definition for internal control is just policies and procedures. But a lot of this you know already. Segregation of duties. This is where I was telling the people at break time. The reason you hear about all these singers, athletes, etc., who make a couple a few hundred million and go broke, 
Google it, um, or put, go put it on YouTube, athletes who go on broke, and listen to their stories. You learn from people. The number one issue, you know it was? I too busy. I don't know this. And you hire people, and you trust them. And either the people steal the money, or they do stupidness, and you lose your money. Segregation of duty is simple. The cashier can't be the person collecting the cash during the day. Then switching over and doing your debit and credit and recording the cash. And then that is the same person because you're too busy carrying the cash to the bank. Certain thing, you can't have the person who's collecting the cash recording doing the rec recording. You need to get involved. Right? Um, authorization, somebody else is your cashier, you need authorizations. This is the part where we where were speaking about. You may be able to do some of the stuff day to day, but you have an independent. Even if you're hiring an accountant to work in with you, nothing is wrong with once a year somebody else coming and checking what they do. That is what companies do, that is what an auditor does. Right? So, the segregation of the duties is the big one. You have to get involved. Even if it's the final thing, you are the person carrying the cash to the bank. One of the things you can also get involved in, cash management, is what we call a bank reconciliation. What a bank reconciliation is is very simple. You will have your records in your accounting system, whether it be a copybook or some software, of this is my bank balance for the July. You will get a bank statement from the bank saying this is your balance in the bank. Probability is, is not the same. We do bank reconciliations. As I say, once they figure close enough to whatever you want, believe it should be, most people don't do anything. But the truth is the bankers make mistakes, right? There is a process, basically a simple. There are things that you would know that the bank didn't know. You issue checks, you issue 10 checks for the month on the bank statement, you only see two cashed. So you know you have eight checks that you issue that haven't been cashed as yet. That bank balance is not your true bank balance because you have some checks out there that need to come in. Cash management, going back to the slide, very important. We have the cash flow statement, your forecasted inflows of cash, your forecasted outflows of cash for the next 12 months. You're managing your cash. You do your bank reconciliation. Well, you may not bother with petty cash funds. That tends to be for larger organizations, right? But the bank reconciliation, very important. And in general, this. Now, no internal control procedure is foolproof if people get together is hard to prevent it. Collusion by people is it will get around any internal control system. Plus is the course on benefit. Right? The more internal controls you put in is more your time that needs to be there. You may be willing to take the risk, but no system is foolproof. But the end result is I believe you need to get involved. Of course, you store your money in a safe. You're not having it just open. The cash register and the receipt book and the invoice book has a benefit of it being pre-numbered. So you always know if somebody did something. <laughs> it would be out of sequence. The flow of the documentation, you may not have all of this, but the purpose of the documentation is the check and balance so that somebody in your business, if it's you doing this, then you're in control. But if it's other people, you don't want somebody being able to just write a check for absolutely no reason. And that is the reason for the documentation. If you are the one controlling this, then you may not, you wouldn't need all of, all of this. But if you have somebody else dealing with your payments, that is when you need all of this control. 
just an example for those who do not do it of a cash budget, it is straightforward. Let's not complicate it. You know where cash comes from. You have your anticipated receipts of cash. You know the stuff you spend on. You have your anticipated payments. Therefore, you know what your surpluses or deficits should be. You know what your beginning cash balances is rolling. What could be important is you may know you need a minimum amount of cash, minimum cash balance required to survive. A lot of people don't include this part. That way, when my cash balance dips below this minimum, I know in the month of March, I have a problem. And I need to find, I need to seek out some financing for the month of March. Because I, the benefit of the cash budget is anticipating problems. Don't complicate this. This could be one line, cash inflows. If your business is simple, one or two lines, cash outflows. What you tr are trying to do is to look into the future to anticipate if you could possibly have a problem. That is all it is. You don't want to reach the 20th of the month if you have employees and realize you don't have enough cash to pay them. Bad things tend to happen after that. <laughs> right? So you want to anticipate. All right, so I hope I have, one, most importantly, showed you the importance of this, demystified it a bit, right? But you need to get involved. That is the bottom line. You really need to understand this a little bit so that you put the correct checks and balances in and yes, they produce your financial statements for you, but you could look at the financial statements or sit with somebody to explain when you run these metrics, what is this really saying about the business? Are we growing? Are we moving in the right, the right way? Or do certain things need to change? So we're going beyond just paying taxes and surviving. <laughs> <laughs>